Hello class. The three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle meet at the circumcenter. The three medians of a triangle meet at the centroid. The three angle bisectors of a triangle meet at the in center. The three altitudes of a triangle meet at the orthocenter. There's really nothing to explain about these four because these are just the definitions of these four words and you just have to memorize them. It, it just is what it is. Okay. Now, perpendicular bisectors of triangle ABC meet at point G. Well, this is what your brain has to do for this. When you see perpendicular bisectors, you have to translate that into which one of these triangle centers we're talking about. Now, if you've memorized the definitions of the triangle centers like you're supposed to, um, you will know this connection you will automatically go, oh, perpendicular bisectors, that means we're talking about the circumcenter. All right, but then you have to make another connection from circumcenter to the special property of a circumcenter. Um, see if you can answer this before I do. What is the special property of a circumcenter? Hopefully you just said equidistant from the vertices. equidistant from the vertices. Okay, now of course looking at this picture, the vertices are A, B, and C. So if, uh, if point G is the circumcenter, it should be equidistant from these three points. Kabam! Equidistant from the vertices means these three lengths will all be the same. The distances from the um, circumcenter, which is what this is, to the vertices. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark them to remind us that these should all be the same. So same, same, same. That's key. All right. Um, what else we have? Uh, GB is supposed to be 15. Okay, so here's GB and it is 15. DC is supposed to be 8, so here's DC. Okay, down here, I'm talking about just from here to here, and it is 8. Find GA. Well, GA is another one of those uh, distances to the vertices. So all three should be the same. So if one of them is 15, um, the other one is definitely going to be 15. <laughs> okay. Um, Alright, they didn't ask this, but um, what if, um, let me just quiz you, what if I had asked you for the length of AC? Can you tell me what the length of AC would be? that would be 16, double the 8. Now here's the other thing that you will sometimes get asked. What if I asked you to find the length of GD? What if I had asked you for GD? What would you do then? Well, I'm, I'm hoping you're realizing that in that case you would do the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. GD would be like this distance right here. You could call it X. Um, the same 15 that's up there would be 15 right here. So I could then do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I could solve this and that would give me GD, whatever that was. So be prepared to do that. All right, uh, moving on. All right, this time they're telling us straight out. S is 
the centroid of triangle CRE. Um, now, when you see the word centroid, you need to be thinking of, well, wait a minute, what are the special properties of a centroid? Okay, let me just make a little space for this problem. Okay, so when you see that we are talking about the centroid, the first thing in your brain has to be, okay, is this the one that's equidistant from the vertices? No, that's circumcenter. Is this the one that's equidistant from the sides? No, that's in center. Uh, centroid, centroid. Oh yeah, this is the one that has all those uh, special formulas because the centroid divides every median into a big part near the vertex and a smaller part near the side. And uh, we know that the special properties are that the, the big part, maybe I should write it out this time. We know that the big part is equal to double the length of the small part. All right, we also know that the big part is two thirds of the whole thing and uh, the small part equals one third of the whole thing. Alright, so these are what we should be thinking of when we ask ourselves what are the special properties of centroid. Okay, so how do we use that? Well, sometimes we use these as actual formulas where we're plugging in numbers. Um, but if we can get away with it, um, it's usually easier to split a median into three equal parts and go from there. So that's when we do the splitting into three equal parts thing. When we're dealing with centroid and we're dealing with these, the two thirds and the one third, you can split it into three equal parts. We'll see what happens. So RS is 18. Let's get that into the picture. RS is 18, so that's this right here. Okay. RS is 18. CK is 30. Okay, so we're being told that CK I better leave space, use the bracket instead. Okay, CK here is 30. All right, so then we're asked to find some other stuff. So let's see, so the first thing we're asked to find is the length of CS. So this would be a great time to use the, um, the this whole two thirds, one third thing um, really means that we can take this median and uh, break it up into three equal parts. So you see what I mean? Um, this is what we mean when we say the, the long part is two-thirds, because there's one-third, two-thirds, and then the small part is one-third. Anyway, three equal parts. So if the whole thing is 30, then what will be the length of each of these thirds? Okay, uh, hopefully you're thinking, yeah, that's going to be 10, 10, and 10. So what's the length of CS? Well, CS is going to be 20. All right, you can only do this for centroid, not for in center or circumcenter or orthocenter. Only for centroid do we divide into three equal parts. So remember that, centroid. Um, anyway, what's the length of SW? Okay, SW, we have to switch over to the red uh, aspect of things. So, um, see, let me move this 18 out a bit. Okay, so the length of RS was given to us to be 18. RS is the bigger part of this median. Um, so this uh, big part of course is two-thirds of the whole thing so I can split this larger part up into two-thirds like that okay so obviously um, it's two-thirds of the whole thing but 
if I'm splitting this in half, uh, what's going to be the size of each one of these pieces here? All right, I'm hoping you can see that that's going to be 9 and 9. Well, the other third of this median is SW. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can see where I'm going with this, but let me just follow through. Okay, what I just colored in orange there is the other third. So these should be three equal parts, so this should be nine, nine, and another nine. Okay, that's how we know that SW should be nine. Okay, what about the length of WE? Oh, you know what? I left something off. Um, we didn't yet deal with the uh, another given piece of information that CE is 14. So um, let's do that now. CE is 14. Uh, should I do purple? I'll put it way out here. Well, first of all, CE is this line. Okay, that's CE. And CE is 14. Okay, now remember that centroid, what is the definition of centroid? In other words, um, what are all these intersecting lines? Well, they are medians. Remember that a median always goes from a vertex to a midpoint. So even though these little lines are not marked, um, every single one of these points are the middle of a segment. So K is a midpoint. W is a midpoint. I is a midpoint. And again, I know that because centroids are the intersection of medians and medians go from a vertex to a midpoint so W is a midpoint so we can be guaranteed that each side of this is going to be congruent so if the whole thing is 14 then what is going to be the length of W E okay I'm pretty sure you can see that the length of W E is going to be, I'm going to have to draw an arrow, I guess. WE is going to have to be 7. Okay. Wasn't too bad. All right. The angle bisectors of triangle PRA meet at point O. Let's digest that again. You have to know the definitions of all the triangle centers to the point where when you see angle bisectors, which triangle center, which point of concurrency is the one that is the intersection of angle bisectors? Can you answer that? All right, angle bisectors, um, you could look back at the top of your paper angle bisectors that's in center okay so that's the first thing you have to when you see angle bisectors you have to think yes that is in center all right let me create a little bit of space again to work in okay so this is your thought process you think angle bisectors and you think, okay, that's the in center. But then you have to go from there and think, all right, what, um, what is the special property of in center? Is it equidistant from the vertices? Is it equidistant from the sides? Is it the one where it's a big part and a small part that I could make into three equal parts? Um, it was that middle one, in center, is equidistant from the sides. Okay, you just have to memorize that. 
So, equidistant from the sides. If I were you, before I do anything else, I would mark the three lengths inside this picture that would be the same because um, of the special property equidistant from the sides. So start thinking about which of these three lines would be the same. Alrighty then, equidistant from the sides means that these three segments would all be the same. Notice that uh, these are perpendicular. That is not optional. When we talk about distances from, from the sides, distances always have to be perpendicular. Um, so anyway, let's get down to business. PS is 12. What's that? Okay, so PS is out here. Okay, so PS is 12. We're given that. OS is 5. Okay, fine and dandy. OS is 5. So we should really focus on that, OS being 5. We just highlighted it. Um, these uh, three distances to the sides should all, all be the same. So if one of them is five, that means all of these red lines that you see here are, are all five. Um, so find EO. Okay, well that was a little too easy. Um, EO will of course also be five because, uh, because OS is five. So EO will be five. Now, um, I don't know why I'm not asking you the hard questions today, but what if I had asked you for the length of OP? Start thinking, and I want you to answer this out loud, even if you're by yourself in your room, it's 1130 at night. Um, tell me, what is uh, what would you do if I asked you to find the length of OP? Okay, I'm really hoping you said something about the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Looking at this triangle up here, if I wanted to find OP, I would use my Pythagorean theorem and say um, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared, because x is the hypotenuse. Now I would solve it from there, I would find OP. So definitely, definitely be ready uh, to do that. All right, we're almost to the end. In this figure, segment SG is congruent to segment RG. Let's see.